our task this week was to look at the field of education leadership, the 21st century school executives. Um, article and we are to develop an action plan right um three areas identified in the document linked above the team is i guess a plan to address those issues okay here yeah. so in a sense <clears throat> And how we might formatively assess each area of concern. And then each member of the team will be charged with describing one area of concern and presenting an explanation of the problem, the strategy, and the assessment process that will measure the impact of the strategy. All will provide the link to the Zoom conference when other responses are submitted. So. You guys have the article up? I do. The process is doing that now. Okay. Give me a second. So the article was a lengthy article. Yeah, I have it, but I'm on a different computer. And I was looking at it earlier. I was getting there earlier. Yeah, I was. Um... I enjoyed this article. This is something that really interests me as far as being an administrator these 21st century field. Um, one of the things that I wrote about a little bit was um, where it says preparing students for the 21st century economy. I wrote a lot about the, uh, the U.S. facing two student achievement gaps. So they talked about one that we focus on a lot, which is between the lowest and the high performing students. Uh -huh. And then I was really interested to read about the global achievement gap. So comparing U.S. students with the students in uh, competitor nations and thinking about how our students and the, the world they're entering in the global economy that they're entering into really needing to compete not just with students across the U.S., but really across the globe. So um, that was one thing that I wrote about and thinking about some different action steps for how administrators and teachers could um, apply that. So I focus a lot of my reading and a lot of my writing on that first one, that global achievement gap. Okay. Um, Dion, what about you? I wrote about the learning and invention skills. Okay. About the, the critical thinking, the problem solving, the communication, the collaboration, you know, working with teams and, you know, with diversity, you know, students. Oh, so you did the learning and innovation skills. Yeah. And so I like Tasha think that our students need to be globally aware um, in all areas. I think a lot of times we stop um, with course subjects, math, science, history, ELA, or reading. But I think that our, that our students have to be prepared financially. They need to, they need to be financially, economic, business, and entrepreneurial literacy. And this just happened to be, um, I just happened to be teaching um, entrepreneurial, the entrepreneurial process to my eighth graders. So this goes right along with it. Um, I think that if our students are financially sound, um, they're economic sound, business and entrepreneurial sound, then they will hopefully not make the mistake that their parents make in those areas. If they are going to be globally aware, then they have to be um, they have to be able to to make it in a global society. And in 2016 and beyond, if you're not financially sound, you're not going to make it. So um, 
I think that's a that's a focus and an area of concern for me. Yeah, um, I agree with you. This past summer, I actually went with some NC State professors, and we traveled to Finland to study their education system because they're really world known for just having the best and doing things just so differently than we would do them here in our education system. And one of the things we kept coming across when we met with teachers over there was similar to what you had mentioned, Dion, earlier, just the focus on those four Cs, the focus on the critical thinking and the communication. And they don't do standardized testing, which we're so heavy on here. Mm -hmm. And when you think about, you know, they talk about these PISA scores and these other countries outscoring us. And you think about, you know, just their school day looks so different. They really focus on that critical thinking, communication, and creativity, whereas we're spending a lot of our time looking at standardized testing scores and preparing students for multiple choice answers. So as far as, you know, competing in that global economy, just I think a lot has to change with what we're, what we're teaching students and how we're teaching them. Right. I agree. Yeah. Don't you know don't, the middle school doing a CTE standard state that's post assessment now? We are doing it um, in December, and so what they t they told us what um, three modules to teach, and so we're doing it December the sixth. They had before I started teaching, um, but um, CTE statewide is a mess. And so our assessment department for Gifford County Schools was real big on having a CTE post assessment because the state, if it was up to them, would not have one because it is such a mess. They don't. They need to fill positions um, across the state and at DPI. But our assessment was saying that CTE middle school teachers didn't have a standard six. So hence we're doing it. I think it's pointless. Huh? I said I think it's pointless. It's, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so as as 21st century school executives, um, as 21st century teachers, we are charged with making sure that our students are college and career ready. It used to be that you could you could either they could either be college or career ready, but because so many people delay going to college um, and they go straight to work, we just have to make sure that we're preparing them to be college and career ready. And again, I think that life and career skills yeah. are essential for those non-routine jobs. And I think we get so caught up in stressing, like Tasha said, the standardized testing, that we forget mm -hmm. to make sure that our students are learning leadership and responsibility, productivity and accountability, social and cross-cultural skills, initiative yeah. and self-direction, flexibility and adaptability. Um, if I ask my students that, um, all of them, they would probably not know but two out of the 10 that are mentioned in the article. And I think mm -hmm. we do our students a, a grave disservice um, when we are not promoting life and career skills across content areas. Yeah, to back up what you're saying, I was just looking at the article and there's a quote that backs up perfectly. Um, it says, um, the ability to think critically, solve problems, communicate, collaborate, find good information quickly, and use technology effectively, these are today's survival skills. But I for career success, but for personal and civic quality of life. So, like you're saying, these, of course, are things we're all going to need in the workplace, but just generally to be, you know, productive members of society, to be able to think critically about what's going on in the world and the solve problems and and in the technology, I just can't even imagine when our students or adults have that kind of progress. But yeah, just a quote from the article to back up what you're saying. Yeah, so 
So yeah, have we identified our areas? Yeah, so um, um, I was focusing on the global achievement gap. And so um, one of the things that I gave my students before, we were talking about students being more globally aware. And last year, I had my students using technology do a global collaboration project. So they actually worked with students in different countries. We found a partner class in Finland, in um, Canada, in Norway, and Turkey. And it was really interesting, you know, thinking about our students and what they know about the world. And they really don't know very much. <laughs> you know, they learn about these places and social studies, and they, they just sound so foreign to them. But, it was really interesting when we think about our students, the world they're entering and being, you know, some of them might work with people in different countries on a daily basis if they're communicating online or through email. So, um, yeah, so for my plan, I have the global achievement job and I talked about incorporating other cultures, whether it's actually another class or just trying to incorporate other cultures, other beliefs, other um, countries into the curriculum more. How would you assess that, Tasha? Formatively yeah, so, assess it. Sure. So one of the things that I would use for formative assessment is I think it's called a global awareness profile. And so it measures a student's awareness and knowledge of the world. So you could do a little pre-test and post-test of, you know, what do they know about some different countries and even just general geography. I mean, I mean, I teach sixth graders and I would mention, oh, this this class or this classes um, that we're going to be talking to is from Europe, and they, they sometimes just really don't even know where that is, which is scary, but it's true. They really um, don't sometimes have an awareness, even outside of North Carolina, you know, sometimes other states. So there's a global awareness profile, and the hope is that kind of the pre-test, post-test, you would see the awareness grow as you're incorporating more cultures and, and countries into your curriculum. Sounds good. Yeah. Dion? Uh, how, are we, how are we going to assess? You're talking about how we're going to assess these skills? So, what is your plan in addressing the deficiencies in the areas that you know? to focus on? And then how would you assess those skills? I plan, I see what you're saying now. Uh, I can, you know, plan to use more, you know, collaboration within, you know, my classroom, both work. <laughs> Yeah, I think collaboration is huge. Yeah, because at Microsoft, well, I teach Microsoft, you know, I teach Microsoft right PowerPoint right now. It's kind of hard, you know, to really collaborate, you know. And so to a plan for my area, um, I my students have to create a website um an entrepreneurial website and we do that after we do the purpose of business um, which is the first unit oh, cool. and so um, my students are um, collecting um, evidences that they will be able to use on their websites i.e i use my students have to talk to me in um in standards and objective talk, they have to tell me that um, 1.01 is uh, the purpose of business and they have to answer essential questions. So um, they're doing quick writes, they're doing um, tickets in the door, they're doing warm ups, they're doing exit slips on that. So by the time they start building their website, they have all of this information and they are becoming literate in those areas because in business, they're going to get an entrepreneurship. I'm sorry. They're going to get the financial, the economic, um, 
an entrepreneur literacy, and they're doing that by way of a business plan. And uh, my students have to do, have to create one, and they understand that it is, a real business plan is more than 30 pages long. And so because they have collected all these evidences, by the time we get to the entrepreneurship unit, um, they are literate in these areas. And um, we're just finishing up, up a unit and so that's how that's how I teach it. And they use we we use um, Wix.com, and they're able to use some some Web 2.0 tools um, to do that to to complete the um, assignment. That's great. Yeah, we're one to one, so everyone has their devices to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. and plus, I have a new lab. Oh, exciting! Yeah, yeah, I have my students there. They had a better website on, uh, like, a, this, like creating your own business last year for digital integration as their final exam. And that's what we had to do in my caps, my capstone project for my business education class. That's a, that's a good assignment. Yeah, and, and so um, because middle school students are taking a high school business course, um, it presents its own challenges, but I always tell my students and parents from day one, um, you're doing high school work in middle school because yeah. they don't have a middle school curriculum for, for business um, education. And so when my students go to high school, they are, a li they, they are more advanced than a, than a ninth grader coming from somewhere else. So I know it here. The sixth graders take that business entrepreneurship class in, in sixth graders here in, here in Wilmington. Uh huh. I and my, my sixth graders do career exploration. Yeah, I taught middle school my, my first year. So we say that we have identified areas, um, analyzed them, and offered viable solutions that included assessments of those areas? Yeah, I think it was a productive conversation. It's interesting. interesting to see how these 21st century skills will come into play in the next couple of years. And I know in, in Wake County, where I teach, it's such a big buzzword right now, the four C's. So the communication, mm -hmm. collaboration, critical thinking, all the things the article talks about it. Every email from every administrator, from the superintendent down, it's a really big push. So it'll be interesting to see how it impacts our students. Mm -hmm. And um, with our new superintendent, it's definitely something. But with the old superintendent, it was something too. Since we had the um, we have the one to one initiative in middle school for middle school students, so um, my middle school students get a. Um, they get a Lenovo 360 laptop and tablet. Yeah, that would be great. So if that's if that's it, then I'll stop the recording. <laughs>